Rob, very much for being here today, and, and uh, appreciate the press, uh, appreciate your indulgence in scooting us back 30 minutes, uh, just in the way of explanation. I was in my airplane with very low ceilings in Hobbs, uh, fighting weather all the way up here, and uh, on takeoff row, and the only time in 50 years of flying that I actually had to abort, I had an alternator failure just at liftoff, and so I had to try to figure out how to get the thing stopped before uh, running off the end of the runway. I've been in the weather before without an alternator, and I was not wanting to do that again. <laughs> and it's a, it's a very nerve-wracking thing. So we jumped in the car. Senator Gallegos got us up here pretty well one time. So uh, thanks to him. Um, uh, again, we're here for maybe the most important issue of our lifetime. The issue of, is one person above the law. I think we're here uh, with the demonstration that no one is above the law. But I want to recognize our other speakers first. We've got uh, John Rothwell, he is the chair of the Bernalillo County Party and, and just a tenacious fighter for freedom and liberty. He's gonna speak uh, after him will be Jay Block, former commissioner in uh, Sandoval County. And again, uh, someone that I know personally will fight for liberty every day. Uh, Senator Gallegos, again, you know him well. Uh, then I'll uh, take uh, and speak after those three. So John Rothwell, thanks for your leadership here in Bernalillo County and uh, step forward. Well, following the law is a very important thing, and we don't find much of that in our current government, in our governor or in our mayor, either one. So we've got plenty of law-abiding citizens that would like to protect themselves, protect their family. Our governor is saying no. It's just fine to have folks living on the streets, just fine to be a sanctuary city, invite everybody to come here, particularly the drug gangs. We've had about enough of this kind of government. We've got to have a new government soon. Thank you. Commissioner Jay Block, Sandoval County. You know, the governor, in her five years, four and a half years in office, she has closed our schools, prevented us from going to church, closed our businesses, and now here she is taking away our Second Amendment rights, and we cannot let this stand. You know, the public health emergency is really on the southern border. And when the governor took office, she took the, our National Guard away from the southern border. So now we have fentanyl and drugs that are destroying our families, with, and now we have high crime, and the governor, once again, didn't do anything in her first term with the incredible crime bills that died in committee put forward by Republicans like Bill Ream and Stephanie Lord and so many others, and Senator uh, Gallegos. The governor did nothing, and now here she is grabbing for more power. And the beauty of this is, this is not about Republicans or Democrats or independents. Even the highest law enforcement official in New Mexico, the Attorney General, has said he will not defend her. And I want to thank, I want to thank Attorney General Torres, DA Bregman, who came out against her. Also, Sheriff Allen here in Bernalillo County, who did a lot of Multiple state reps and senators are coming out against the governor, Democrats, by the way. That is us coming together as constitution-loving Americans, unlike this governor, which is why I support the articles of impeachment against the governor. And I ask, and I ask the governor to resign. Thank you. Thank you, John. I also want to thank you for being here. I was with Congressman Pierce or Chairman Pierce on the way up here. Uh, we had a lot of good time to talk. It's uh, somewhere around 325 miles from Eunice to here. Uh, but one of the things that just kept coming to mind uh, for me is if the problem here in Albuquerque and Bernalillo County is the violence. She's talking right. about the shootings and the violence here. Why would she, using her statement, so the governor's, governor says she didn't expect criminals to follow the order. <laughs> if it's about crime, and she's had opportunity, as Chairman Block was talking, Commissioner Block was talking, we've had opportunity in Santa Fe to fix these things. She's not willing. But now she's making a point to take away the law-abiding citizens' sidearms, their firearms, what they use to protect their families. I just want to give you a briefing of what we're doing. So uh, I know that we've got three to four lawsuits already uh, 
being filed. Uh, the House Republican Caucus and the Senate Republican Caucus have their own. We're hoping to merge everybody to have one huge voice against governor. Uh, we in Lee County are starting to look at ordinances to protect our communities and our county. And we're hoping that will go across the state. And then you have uh, Representative Lord and Block that are actually starting the impeachment process. I think that it's going to take all of these and all of you to be able to stand up against the governor and say, we've had enough. New Mexico is better than this. New Mexico right now is being looked at by the whole country and probably the world in a really, really bad light. So I ask you to continue the fight with us so that we can protect every New Mexican in the state, not just the one on the fourth floor of the Capitol. Thank you. The Republican Party of New Mexico will drop tomorrow the lawsuit against the governor. Somebody has to be a voice for the people and we will do that. Now, our lawyer has said there will be many people going after the shiny object, that is the Second Amendment. Uh, he said that's going to get overturned immediately. But he said the bigger problem is her mandate that she claims gives her the right to violate the Constitution. Uh, can we? I don't want anybody to move, but I want to see if we can run that video over here. It's 25 seconds. Everything is a public health Turn it issue. up. Gun violence is a public health issue. Poverty is a public health issue. Environmental consequences from energy is a public health issue. All of these disenfranchised uh, populations, all of the equity barriers are all public health issues. And when we address those, our economy is better, our families are stronger, our risks are fewer. Do you hear what she's saying? That gun violence is a health problem, and she has now invoked an executive order based on a public health order. But she also says environmental consequences. She should be able to shut down oil and gas production. At that point, teachers in this, this state take a 50% pay cut because oil and gas provides 50% of the tax base for this state, and she has no way to replace it. She also says that she can take your paycheck. She can take your savings account in order to have uh, equity in our, in our financial status. Is that the country we want to live in? No. 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 I have traveled in totalitarian countries. I've traveled in Russia. I've traveled in, uh, in China. I gave a speech to the parliament in Belarus where they were trying to get loose from totalitarianism and move toward freedom. And I will tell you, having seen totalitarian up close, this action by the governor speaks of totalitarianism right here in this country and in this state, and we will not stand for it. The governor says she has the right to disobey the Constitution, that it doesn't apply in all circumstances. I would beg to disagree with her. A Constitution is merely a contract. This contract of the Constitution our founding fathers set up as a contract between the people and, and the, uh, the government. Always in a contract, the lesser party is protected and the more powerful party is, has its rights limited. In every contract, the, the, the wealthy, the strong, the, the powerful never need a contract. If you uh, want to build a house, you're going to get a contract with the, the person going to build it. You're the lesser party. He doesn't need the contract. You need when he puts in bad things. So our Constitution was set up to, pro to, to protect our rights. The First Amendment is this right that we're expressing right here, the right to assemble without being uh, impeded by the government. If she can stop the gun rights, she can stop us from gathering. Right. Right. That same First Amendment is your right of the press to be able to speak uh, plainly to the people. If she can take away the gun rights, she can take away the power of the press. If she can take away that, she can take away the power of, of our ability to worship the way that we want to. The Constitution it limits the power of the federal government. It limits her power. And she says plainly over and over that there are exceptions to the Constitution. I'm sorry, the exceptions have to be written into contracts. They can't be just uh, thrown in there by some governor that wants to uh, prove her power to the entire world. I'm sorry, but I'm uh, standing four square with a group that wants to impeach her. She should be out of office right now. Yeah. We can't 
just say the governor, she could not have done what she did without two signatures. That's the right. Secretary of Health was required to sign a signature. Let me tell you a little bit about Patrick Allen's background. He was just until January of this year, the Secretary of Health in Oregon. The incoming Democrat governor said she was gonna fire him because he didn't provide adequate uh, health services to Oregon. He resigned and we got him here. Why do we need somebody that was gonna get fired in Oregon to come down here and sign executive orders that violate the Constitution? I call on the, the uh, Secretary of Health to, re be resi to resign or be removed uh, by the legislature. Get him out of here. The, the reports were that he was failing in his uh, in one of his missions to provide uh, to, to uh, provide education to the students during the pandemic that Oregonians suffered more than any others. We already have the 51st uh, state in education in the entire nation, even behind the District of Columbia. And she brings in somebody that, to, to help make it worse. I don't think that we need Patrick Allen in the state. Send him back to Oregon. Find a New Mexico to run the whole yeah. Yeah. Our lawsuit doesn't just deal with, again, the guns. It's going to deal with her ability to use these health orders and executive orders. Our lawyer has said it is a very difficult uh, case to win. We have taken the governor to task and taken her to the Supreme Court of New Mexico when she closed down small businesses. You remember she left the big box stores yeah, open yeah, right. and she had, had told small businesses you have to shut down. That fit a national narrative. They don't want small independent local businesses because they're hard to control. They can control one person at the top of these major corporations. And so we took her to suit. That's the only one that, uh, the only lawsuit that, that, that we failed in, in the seven or eight that, uh, that I've been participating in uh, going to the Supreme Court. Seven out of the eight cases that we've taken up there have been successful. I believe this is gonna be successful. I believe the Supreme Court here in New Mexico is going to agree with us that there are limits to everyone's power, even the governor's power, even the president's power. No one is above the law, and that's our message today to the governor. You are not above the law, governor. We also have a message that people are coming together. I just got a report from our booth, our fair booth out at the state fairgrounds, and they said people are clustering. They don't care what registration, they don't care what nationality, they don't care what religion. They're there to protect freedom. They're there to sign up, to volunteer, to be something, to take a part, to, to defend the freedoms and liberty yes. that we were guaranteed when we got when they, when they <laughs> This is not about Republicans. We will take the lead because we're called to take the lead. But know that we're not alone. This is all Americans. Amen. This is all New Mexicans standing up against the totalitarianism of this governor. Yes. And if she thinks the fight is over now, just wait until uh, we get into that legislative session and the uh, legislature begins to have to wrestle with the question, are we going to impeach or not? You're going to find people showing up there. You're going to find people demonstrating. And we'll see again that she wants to limit our power to gather together. Governor, that's another one of our, another one of our freedoms, the First Amendment to the Constitution. Yes, and we're yes. going to demand that when it comes time to speak to the legislative body about removing you from the office in which you uh, hold today. So I uh, appreciate everyone being here today. I appreciate our speakers. And I appreciate uh, this group of people who love freedom enough to show up on a rainy day uh, here at Albuquerque to listen to a couple of us uh, speak uh, too long. Uh, so thank you all very much. Appreciate it. And we're going to go to questions. We're going to go to questions. And uh, Ash, if you'll recognize the questions, you, you know who's here. All right. Um, I, no, I don't know what's going on in the governor's mind, but I suspect she, in her calculus, knows that she would likely have this swatted down. But she's got your attention. And she certainly wants to talk about this issue of gun violence. So what is the solution in your mind? If you're going to uh, talk about gun violence, then go after the people that are doing the violent acts with guns. <laughs> if you took every single murder in the last 10 years in Albuquerque, I'll bet less than 10%, less than 1% are concealed carry. Most of the people shooting folks are brandishing weapons uh, openly. The people who are walking into restaurants and taking food off of, of diners' tables, the people who are breaking into stores and, and uh, stealing and carrying out, 
Those are the people you attack. You don't attack the law-abiding citizens first. And then would you cost for the FBI to come in here? Are you kidding me? You tell the police that they can't do the job. You want to defund the police. You say you're going to redesign the, the, the task that they're up against. And then you expect crime to, uh, to dissipate. You turn criminals loose six, eight, nine times without putting them in jail for right. infractions. Right. And you expect them to ever think that the law is going to apply to them. That's where you begin. Begin with the criminals. Don't begin with the law-abiding citizens. Yes. Keller today called for a special session to address crime and gun. Do you think, do you, would that be something you support and do you think it could be a productive special session? Look, all of us want special sessions to work, but they turned down every single crime bill in the past two or three sessions. Yeah. So right. what are they going to do? Go up there and rubber stamp something? The mayor doesn't need a special session. What the mayor needs to do is support law enforcement and put them in jail. That's what the mayor needs to do. What will it take to overturn Daniel's law? That's the one that sets the criminals free. That's why we have no bondsmen to do date. Again, you recall that the the whole process in that uh, that particular question to to get the courts to turn people loose had to be put in front of the people in multiple different fashions and different words because the people turned it down but they kept uh, jockeying with the words. And so the legislative body intended to fool the people. And now they're saying, well, I just didn't know I was gonna do that. I'm sorry, we, we see it happening in every single state. We see the crime that's happening because criminals get released over and over again. And I'm just saying to people, if you want Daniels overturned, you're gonna have to elect different representatives. You're gonna have to elect people who are committed to changing the things that are causing the crime. You have to change that. We're gonna keep going as long as we need to. All right? Okay. You can still recognize them, but I'm not on the show. Any more from the press? Yeah, I got one more. Yeah. Um, so we heard from a constitutional law expert over the weekend about efforts to potentially get an emergency stay on this order. Is that something in the works, or can you tell me a little bit more about the mechanism of this lawsuit? Why should we need an emergency stay to protect the Constitution of the United States? I think they just need to whack, whack this thing down and send her packing. That's what I think. Yeah. She wants to go to D.C.? Fine. Let's give her a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> Other questions? Do you have any questions from the press? From the press. All right. We're, yes. Okay. <laughs> Hi, um, uh, just to piggyback off, I'm sorry, what's your name? John. John, sorry, just to piggyback off what John said, because that was also my concern in regards to gun Speak violence and, just and, crime bills that, just way too long. and crime bills that uh, were not passed. I know that was a huge concern as well, but just what what's the underlying issue? Like, how do you guys find the middle ground? I know you guys are asking for her impeachment, but do you feel like that's the only solution at this point? Because she did say that it's a temporary ban, it's a cooling period. You, you know, do not temporarily no. stop <laughs> liberty. Liberty never stops, it's written in the Constitution. She did not have the right to do it at all. So the fact that, oh, well, it's just temporary. I'm sorry, that's a game that's being played because you hear her on her speech saying that she's going to use it to stop poverty. She's going to use it to stop this, stop that. You cannot suspend the Constitution no matter how noble your intent is. And believe me, I do not think her intent is noble. I think her intent is to take rights away from law-abiding citizens, to take, to take their savings accounts away, to redirect it, to take their pensions away. That's where this agenda is going that she mentioned to the, uh, the John Hopkins uh, School of Medicine or to the, the Health Institute at John Hopkins. So I think that she gave us the roadmap that she instant, intends to implement. So the idea is temporary. That means that she wants to, if it's too hot, then she'll pull it out of the stove and wait till people calm down and stick it back in. Yeah. I think that we must act today and say never again, Governor, will you violate the Constitution. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, just to carry on with what you're saying, because I know a couple years ago when the public health emergency order happened with COVID, 
Yeah, you're gonna have to speak up just, I'm sorry. COVID, COVID the temporary health emergency order with COVID, right? And I'm, not, I'm just asking you to just be direct. Is there an underlying fear to think that it may be extended, this public health order? Because that's what we're saying. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 there is. There is. The election variant is coming up. There is uh, obviously a fear that it will be extended, but the greater fear is that it is implemented at all. That somebody would have the arrogance to say the Constitution does not apply uh, to me all the time, that I have the right. She says those words, and I think that we need to hold her account for those words. That's the biggest fear, that she even had the idea that she could bridge the Constitution, that it did not apply uh, sure, there's uh, the idea that it's going to be used further. That's the reason our lawsuit is going not only after the Second Amendment protection, but it is digging down to that health order that she claims is the right. That is not the right to take away anybody's freedom. It is not the right to abridge any constitutional provision, and we are going to take that. It's a very difficult uh, case. Uh, that our lawyer has said, but that is where we are headed because we must deal with this question in this country right now. We can't yes, allow yes. this thought process to take seed. Yes. Amen. Right. Yes. So you mentioned earlier about uh, a possible middle ground is focusing on getting uh, criminals behind bars. However, in the public health order, two of the specific cases mentioned involve uh, children that were killed by teenagers that got their hands on guns. Do you have any comment on those concerns involving those cases? So if the question is, uh, were these teenagers concealed carrier holders? I don't think so. Yeah, if you, wanna, if you want us to research, I'm sure I got somebody behind me who research, and I think you'll find that none of the ones that, uh, that are being held accountable were concealed carry holders. They're the people who are, uh, who are following the law. They're the ones who are, uh, get their permits, they go through classes. The criminals don't care. They're not going to follow the law. And then, as uh, Senator Gallego said, she said she doesn't expect the criminals to follow this anyway. Why the heck do you take away liberties when you know that it's not going to affect the people who are doing the killing? I don't understand that thought process. And again, I think it's about the agenda. One more question. Uh, two more, I'll see. Yeah. The governor stated on social media when she was questioned about the order that open carry and concealed carry is within her jurisdiction in the state law. <laughs> Just curious what your reaction to that is and if that will be included in your law. Yeah, my, your question is, uh, what's my position on open carry and concealed carry? Uh, just your reaction to the governor saying that those laws are within her jurisdiction because they're state laws and if you're going to be looking at no, the, the, laws. The, the U.S. Constitution and the Mexico Constitution protect those rights and we're going to insist that those rights be protected. Yes. 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 All right. Is there one more question? All right. One more question. I'm sorry, but we're ruling Ash, and I have to deal with her later. But <laughs> if you don't have any questions, you need to go ahead and ask them, or I'm going to have to. What about the weaponization of the state do, police? Do Is there anything? Just being from done? the press. Yeah. Do you have any more questions from the press? And we have a, a social media request here. Yes. One of the signatures that we didn't talk about was our Secretary of State signing off on this unconstitutional order. Are we going to go after her? Because she needs to be held responsible as well. Yes. 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 In a uh, in a situation like this, the more targets mean the less uh, effective the effort, because the public uh, needs to know exactly what the targets are, and so there may be a time to deal with that, but right now. We have a far greater urgency to deal with, and we're going to deal with that urgency first, and that's the governor feeling like she does not have to obey the Constitution at all times. The Constitution doesn't take a nap. It doesn't go to sleep at night. It is here to protect the people, the weaker party, in that contract between government and people. And everything written in there is, is uh, designed to protect the rights of the people. If you go to the Tenth Amendment, they, they were afraid that the other amendments would not be clear enough. So in the Tenth Amendment, they say everything not given to the government is reserved to the states and the people uh, which apply. And so understand that our founding fathers were afraid of exactly what's happening here. They just didn't think it was going to be the governor of New Mexico doing it. Uh, so uh, <laughs> just, you, know, you never can imagine uh, what anomalies are laying out there. But, uh, but we're here to stand our ground because we're just as passionate, we as New Mexico, Mexicans are just as passionate as, about our freedom as the founding fathers were when they came here and created this country. They came to get away from the kings in Europe, the kings who could tell you what job you're going to have, what education you're going to have, what, 
what uh, level in society you could be, who you would marry, everything. The kinks could tell you everything. People said, we just want to breathe. We want to be free. We want to come here. We want to join a different church than the, the Church of England or the Church of the State. And they came here and founded the most magnificent country in human history. And we are not going to let the governor of New Mexico stand in the way of that magnificence. We will contest this to the very end. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.